Hello, my name is Patrick Gallagher and I make Celtic art. I try to embrace the modern traditions, abstract expressionism, modernism, postmodernism, uh, impressionism, um, and meanwhile being true to the Celtic design styles and symbolism. Um, it has been a tradition in Celtic art to embrace the technological changes and to uh, live in the civilization and you know that you're living in but be true to the, the symbols and the ideas of the Celtic art. Um, I carve in wood, I paint pictures, I make jewelry, um, but all to me it's the Celtic art. The media is incidental to the process. Um, the, it's the Celtic art, the essence of its spiritual symbolism and its reach into people's souls that is more important than the actual media that you're working with. My first claim to fame was in printmaking. Um, I traveled around, I kept making prints. It was something that I could, I could make my prints on the, on the, in the kitchen table. I didn't need any, anybody to help me. I could make additions, I could learn how to do it. And eventually uh, I, went back to, I went back to college and got my master's degree in printmaking because it really was a, an exciting thing. You know, as the internet came along, I really got into digital printing. And you know, I was able to incorporate the old style of the printing and I could scan those in and then I could overlay layers of uh, computer graphics and you know, marry the old with the new. And the one thing that I have discovered with Celtic art that you need to keep one foot in the past and one foot in the future. And then you need to be in the, in the middle, in the present, creating it for now. And, you know, so the printmaking for me, the graphics, the telling of the story. Um, in, in Celtic art is a tradition to, uh, you know, tell a story, to inform somebody about the myth or the, you know, the symbolism of, of, of what happened. Um, and I have a series of prints that I did for my master's degree, which I call the Bard Suite, because in the Bardic tradition, you know, it was the job of the artist to, you know, tell the stories. It was an oral tradition. And since a picture says a thousand words, um, you know, I want my pictures to be complete and accurate in that. And I did this series. Uh, the first one was the Stone of Destiny. And the Stone of Destiny, which exists at the Hill of Tara in, in Ireland, was purportedly brought, uh, you know, a long time ago by the Milesians when they were coming in from Spain. And it has an origin long ago. It was supposedly Jacob's pillow, where he had puts his head on it and he has the uh, vision of the ladder. So they bring this stone to Ireland, and when a king, a true king of Ireland, would be crowned, he would touch it, he would put his hands on it, and the stone would scream out uh, in its horrendous noises. And it was, it was considered the earth mother and the king were uh, embracing in this spiritual, sexually visceral kind of experience. You know, and around the sixth century, the some Christian saint cursed the site and it never made the sound again. So when I went there, I had to see if I could start it up again, but it did not work. <laughs> Long ago in time, there was a symbol called the Salmon of Knowledge. And it's illustrated in a lot of the Celtic myths. The names changed, but the story's the same. And this, the witch or the wizard or the crone or whoever it is, you know, catches the Salmon of Knowledge. And whoever eats of the Salmon of Knowledge will attain the wisdom of the universe. So they have their assistant uh, cook the fish up. And as the fish is cooking, a little spot of grease spits off it and hits the thumb of the assistant. Now, the assistant's name has changed from Amergine and Taliesin and all the different ones. And so that assistant puts his thumb in his mouth because his finger was burned and attains the wisdom of the universe. And to the chagrin of the wizard or the witch, whoever, and they know that this person is now, you know, the, the true bard. And this is the origin of the Bardic tradition of the Celtic cultures. And then these people then, it's their job to, you know, 
uh, hold the, the wisdom and store it, and then to you know teach it to people. So in my pieces, I've used this salmon and knowledge because as a teacher of Celtic art, um, that is a very important symbol. And in my programs, I want to you know use that symbol and get people to embrace the idea that you need to learn it and then teach it to people um, because there is no real. Um, there's no establishment uh, that teaches, there's no art, Celtic art school that you can go to. So, you know, we're still a culture of bards and people, you know, who travel around and teach each other the traditions. Recently, um, I'm on a new kick where I'm trying to make Celtic furniture. And my first piece is a, a coffee table. And I have on it all the motifs of Celtic art, the knotwork, the spirals. And I also have some symbols there, stone carvings from the fifth century from Northern Ireland. And you know, I definitely used Iron Age legs and it was just a thrilling piece to make. It took hundreds and hundreds of hours of carving. Before I was officially a Celtic artist, where I said, you know, I'm going to be a Celtic artist for the rest of my life, I was a painter. And I did lots of landscape paintings, and I really loved the medium of painting. And then, so after about 10 years of doing Celtic art, I kind of longed for the brush and the paint and the canvas. And I realized that I wanted to do Celtic paintings. And in my master's uh, experience, uh, I had really discovered and embraced abstract expressionism. And I realized that Celtic art, when you look at the Book of Kells, you know, they could not make a mistake. You know, I developed this style which I call Celtic expressionism. And I would, you know, create a, a very active, uh, chaos theory oriented background, uh, you know, the swirling of the cosmos and creation in the universe. And then over the top of it, using a calligraphic kind of effect, I would then draw Celtic knotwork and spirals and different designs, which, uh, you know, the performance of that needed to be immediate and, you know, in the abstract expression uh, tradition of, you know, throwing the paint down there like Jackson Pollock and, and, and those artists who were very inspirational to me early in my career. And then, so I wanted to, you know, do the Celtic art in this medium.